Good morning. Welcome fellow pilgrims and friends and neighbors <clears throat> to our daily devotional from Pilgrim Congregational Church. I'm Patrick Horn and <clears throat> we are uh, meeting together online for about 10 minutes each morning at 9 a.m. We're also recording this so that you can watch and listen later. And we have been studying the book of Acts over the last couple of weeks, and we're in Acts chapter 2 uh, this week. And we're reading Acts chapter 2, verse 44. This is a part of the description of the early church and led at the time by Peter in Jerusalem. Um, only a few weeks after the resurrection of, of Christ. And verse 44 from Acts chapter 2, and I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. That's verse 44 of Acts chapter 2. Fellowship here is the Greek word that you've heard before, koinonia. And uh, as I mentioned in the Bible study last night, Acts is the only, the book of Acts is the only book that the word is used in, but you clearly get the sense of the word in Paul's letters as well when he talks about being initiated into the newness of life in the Spirit of God. Now here in these verses, the emphasis is that the presence of God's Spirit actually transforms different individual believers into a unity a common unity of fellowship. So uh, Acts chapter 2 emphasizes the power of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the community is that um, they're together and that they hold things in common. And this phrase in the Greek um, is, uh, indicates a deep sense of, of friendship, love, of care and concern uh, for one another and the point here is to emphasize that what the community shares is more than just beliefs and core values which they do share but it's also to emphasize that as a community of friends they <clears throat> demonstrate a deep regard for each other's physical and spiritual well-being so it means living in close association with one another and there's no intellectual snobbery no social snobbery there are no racial preferences or privileges they're held together by the same ideas which are uh, the teachings of the apostles they're held, held together by the same practices the breaking of the bread together they're held together by the same religious rituals, the prayer and worship, and they're held together by the same economic rights and responsibilities. Uh, it's very interesting that I think there are some corollaries here with democratic principles that we share. That is the value of every single individual and the importance of working toward equality in all things. We find this sort of uni unity expressed also in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. This is um, 1 Peter 1, 22. <clears throat> Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brethren, Love one another earnestly from the heart. And so there are many passages in the New Testament that emphasize 
this love that we are to have for one another in community, in common community. Now, there are going to be particular issues that uh, will arise. Uh, there will be challenges and difficulties. Uh, these, these are ideals, and they are things that we strive for, but there's not a sense at all that, <clears throat> that these are things that sort of magically happen. They're actually things that we, that we work on together as a community. And um, so I think some of these things too, uh, some of us, I know I am, some of us are beginning to develop a deeper appreciation for, or at least to understand them in a way that maybe we didn't before this crisis. And the way that this crisis has kept us from being able to fulfill um, some of the ways in which we express our unity with one another, I think we have maybe uh, a deeper appreciation for them now and maybe a better understanding of the sort of role that, that they play in our lives. So I know all of us are looking forward to being able to get back into the same room to do these things together. Let's close with uh, a prayer. O thou, the hope of Israel, the Savior of the world, why should thou be as a traveler with us, as a wayfaring man who turns aside to tarry for a night? Thou art in the midst of us. Leave us not. Thou who hast set the hope of thy revelation in the hearts of all, manifest thyself to us. Thou who hast spoken in times past by the prophets, and in the fullness of time has revealed thyself in one who was a son, enable us to realize that thou abidest with us always. Dwell with us in glorious splendor, enthrone thyself among the nations, walk in our midst, and be to us Thank you so much for joining this morning for our daily devotional on Pastor Horn with the Pilgrim Congregational Church. I hope you can join us each morning at 9 a.m. and for Sunday services at 10 a.m. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. God